Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, yes, as you've seen, uh, Nicholas Felix joins us next. He did vie for the APC's presidential tickets. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, that report was just played. The large chunk, the larger chunk, the largest chunk of those eligible voters happen to be young people yep. between the ages of 18 and 34. But, and they have a major say. They will, they should, they're expected to have a major say in the elections. It depends on how and who turns up. You never can tell until the day. The figures are one thing, then on the actual day, it's a separate thing entirely. But you've been holding meetings of um, uh, other, what, presidential aspirants yes. with a view to rallying them and getting them to form a position. What is the essence of that, though? Yeah, um, the essence of the meeting is to get former uh, candidates and aspirant. First of all, not to retreat, because uh, the last time I was here, I remember mentioning that a lot of the candidates and aspirants who were uh, vying for the post, uh, the office of the president in 2019, many are nowhere to be found this time around, maybe partly because of the deregistration of some of the political parties. And I believe what we started in 2019 should not die. A lot of the youths were highly involved in 2019 election. And I also believe one of the reasons we had less violence in the 2019 election was because of the youth participation. A lot of these youths who rallied around us, over 40 young candidates were there and aspirants. They saw hope. They saw, you know, their interests being represented. Now that uh, uh, 2023 is like we had less of them, we're trying to get back on board, you know, to, to rally uh, around a candidate at the end of the day where youth will be on board. Now, it's we have a lot of youth. It's already around the, the I, Yes, the idea is, at the end of the day, we, we are not on the ballot. But at the end of the day, after the election is over, when youth have voted, we don't want to be left aside. You know, like I said on the day of the primary election, the only title they give us and the only offices they give us is SA to SA to SA. Yep. We're tired of being SA. So what we are doing now is yep. we're coming together, APC, and from the APC we have PDP, we have Labour Party, all other parties. As far as you contested or you were an aspirant or candidate in 2019 and 2023, uh -huh. we are discussing. Okay. Where so do if, we go if, from here? If you say to rally around a candidate, yes. at what point, well, if it's a candidate, if you rally around one candidate and the candidate loses, what, what does that mean? That's the point. That's why we are not deciding now. We even know we are near where we are deciding who the candidate is. First of all, we are putting our, setting up structures. We are discussing. To my greater surprise, the first meeting we had, I thought it was going to be a lot of work, like what happened to the part. I thought we were going to fall, uh, fall apart in our discussion. To my greater surprise, we all had one voice. Even before I presented the agenda, everybody was speaking up and said, this is what we should do. I felt like, wow, this is going to be quite easy for us. So now what we're doing, we're putting our self-interest aside. We're putting our political party interests aside, saying, Let's analyze what is going on. Who, first of all, who is the candidate that is going to make sure you to have a voice? We want to see youth ministers. We want to see youth as head of prayer status. These are the things we are looking for. Not just using us to vote for you, 61% of the eligible voters are going to vote, and they are all youth. At the end of the day, we are set aside. Even so, the youth, minister of youth is going to be an elderly man. We don't want the, that. What is the yardstick to determine this person who has a youth program? First of all, we want to see the friendliness of this candidate, not what you're telling us. Friendliness of this candidate. That's objective. No, okay. What is your antecedents? In the past, what did you do with the youth? Some of the candidates of the governors, when you were governor, what did you do with the youth? Was there anybody uh, youth in your cabinet? That's number one. All this why you are, you're no longer a candidate. Uh, uh, how many youths have you empowered? What have you been doing with the youth? Not just what you're telling us now, I'm going to give you this, because these are politicians. They're going to say everything they want to say. 50% is going but, to be youth. But you're politicians, politicians too. I, I don't consider myself the, uh, <laughs> the politicians that you are used to. I'm, I'm a different kind of politician. Mm. I, I, say, I say the truth and what I think is obtainable. So they're going to tell us this. We don't want to be carried away by, by this. We want to know... When you were a governor, what, what did you do? Or when you were vice president, whatever you know, position you had before. Huh. And now all this why, what have you been doing? How are you running around you? That's the things we're going to look at. And most importantly, who is going to win this election? Mm. So, so, so okay. it's a discussion. We, we've not <laughs> gotten there yet, but we're getting there. You know, only recently okay. I had a cause to have a conversation um, around this. It was with the former governor of um, Akwaibom State. Um, um, 
And he, we're talking about, uh, he has a new group, <clears throat> but there have been a number of former governors, so I have to be very specific <laughs> about uh, which of the governors now. <clears throat> anyways, anyways, uh, he now has a new group. It's called the Compatriots, I think. Obong. Victor Atta. Victor yeah. Atta. And he was telling me, I was, I was saying, oh, do you have young people on board? He, what he's looking for is unity. And he was saying, you know, I, sh I need to be a little more specific in terms of what young, what I mean by young people. And he talked about when he was governor. When he was governor in 1999, there were a lot of other governors. He, he was rather, uh, uh, well, I say on the older side, there were younger governors, don't know, Duke of uh, Cross River State was one of them. Uh, and a number of other governors who were young, there were others in his own uh, age range. And he said that, look, what he finds interesting or what he thinks that a focus should be on should be about ideas, not about age. Um, and I don't know whether that, that is also coming on board, because it says if you also look at how student union groups are conducting themselves these days, you have to ask questions as to whether or not you know, there's really anything different in terms of what the older people are doing and what young people are doing. So are you making this distinction, or is your association just based on uh, because we're young, because we're in a certain age grade, uh, that that should be sufficient for us to, you know, have the same sort of ideas. What if you have people who are in your group and who are still thinking like, you know, the, the older folks? What difference is that going to make to you? Of course, that's where the orientation comes in. And that's why we spend hours discussing this. Now, we do understand that it's going to be issues of ideas. And we don't want to be carried away with just ideas. And now, as young people, we are set aside. That has been what has been going on in this nation, where now they think uh, we don't have no ideas. We are saying we are young. We have ideas. Now, let's make it clear. If you look at uh, all our, even our president, President Mohamed Obari, Nigerians wanted him so bad because they felt when he was minister, when he was uh, head of state, he did so well. If we are agreeing that these guys did well when they were in office, let's look at why they did well. Is it, because young, they were, is it all young people who have ideas? Not all young people. Of course, we are not saying every young man out there you know, should get into office. But some of us came out, we contested. Some of us came out, we threw our heart in the race. Are you aware that some uh, young candidates sold their property? I had one telling me he sold two of his properties just to get in the race. Some loaned money. It's one of, one of the reasons you don't want to see many of them out there. Many people got hurt as young candidates. I believe it's the passion and the love they have for this do, nation. Do you think that people should sell? Uh, if I hear that somebody is selling property to join a race, I will be concerned. Of course. I mean, I would advise that. I would even advise you loaning money. But I'm just saying they had passion. They had love for our dear country. And that's why they went into the race. Now, I think it's something for us to Is that how you're reading it? I'm reading it a little differently. <laughs> yes, you may read it differently, but... I think uh, the deed is done. I wouldn't want to pull him down already. He's already they're already feeling the hurt. My job now is to, as far as Proverbs 27, 17, sharpen them, encourage them not to give up. That's, there are many of them who don't even want to join anything. They yeah, are but, out but, of politics. But we also need to make sure that people don't make the same mistakes. That's why you are we're highlighting this. Yes, and that's why we are coming together as youth to, you know. At the end of this, this is what we, we make somebody like me very happy. When we youth infiltrate the system, for example, uh, Clement Jimbo was one of the aspirants in 2019. Even though he couldn't get the ticket to, in his party to becoming a candidate, we spoke. He joined the APC. Now he's running for House of Rep in his uh, constituency. And he won the ticket. I'll be so glad to see him as he representing his constituency. We have younger people who, you know, they are trying to get on board. Our job is to encourage them. Do you, do a time you... come yeah. where we have to forget about it. For example, in 2008, the first person I ever voted for as a person was Obama. I didn't care what Obama was, what, whatever idea he had. What I was concerned about is, he's a black man. This is going to be the black, first black president. Forget whether you have anything to offer. I voted for him because he was black. A time come where we are saying, get, get us on board. We have something to bring aboard. But that's some people say that's voting on emotion. Uh, and yes, and you cannot you discountenance the, uh, the power of emotions in, in politics. Uh, it's, it's really very strong. And it is one of the things that fuels the passion that people feel. Uh, but, you know, from what we have seen, after emotion dies, then we now begin to look at capacity. <laughs> whether or not, stark you know, reality. Yeah, the, the, when stark reality hits, we now begin to, you know, vet whether or not the person even knows what that office is about, whether or not the person has had the prerequisite uh, you know, uh, what they call experience. Because there's a reason why when you apply for a job, 
uh, the employers look to see your CV. They want to see whether your, your resume fits the, the position which you're applying for. Uh, are you able to say, you know what, even though we're supporting young people, there needs to be a place where capacity is built, that we must see a track record of capacity being built over the years before we can say, this is the kind of young person that we can vouch for. Yes, I mean, that's left now for the candidate to decide. Yeah, for which candidates? I'm saying, okay, whoever becomes the president. The point we are trying to make now is we're not even represented on the table. The idea of we don't have ideas, I went to a strange land. Which of the tables? And I built, when I mean table, I want to see uh, in the administration, not during the election. What we're doing now is beyond just the election. We want, to see, we want to be relevant after the election is over. Apparently, the only time the youth, youth, youth is doing the election. So what we are fighting for is when 2023 election is over, we want to see youth, you know, start getting into the space, start doing something. For example, including the women. When I heard at the Moore State, uh, the uh, APC uh, candidate, governorial candidate is a lady. I was excited. We, the, thing, the world is moving on. We have to follow the trend. Youth, we have capacity. You won't know what we can bring about if we don't get on board. We, some of us have done great in our, in our young life. Build ministries, plant churches all over the world. I've traveled to about 18 countries building churches. I have businesses over 100 for the something employee. I've built a multi-million dollar company in America at a very young age. If I can do that in the private sector, what is politics is the easiest with what I've seen. Plant, running the ministry, running the business. We have done that in our young age. But if you don't put us on board, if we don't come on board, you will know exactly what we can do. Now, this idea of always saying, what have you done before? What have you done before? Has it occurred to you that every pilot that flies, there was a day they flew the plane after they graduated. Mm -hmm. They don't come to announce to us, today is my first day flying, and uh, nobody will fly the plane. But they give them, the, the company, the airline give them the privilege, they go on board, and they land us. After a while, they start telling us I've had 200,000 miles to my But you started one day. So we are saying, get on support. And that's where leadership and tutorials come in. If the leaders don't prepare the future for us and prepare us for the future, there's going to be disaster. So when, get on support, tutor us, but don't just put us aside. That's what we're trying to say. When you keep saying, get us on board, I mean, you've spoken about what you've done in different countries. Nobody got you on board. You went and you took it. You made those things happen. Uh, you didn't wait for anything to drop on your laps. Yes. So why is this one different? No, okay, it's different because the political space here is quite different. Number one, for you to win some level of election, especially at the federal level, you and I know it takes a whole lot of resources. So if we can be elected at some level, you can appoint us. So we're pushing for election. That's why I sample those who are, we have a 45-year-old young guy in uh, Edo, uh, Dr. Valentine, he won the ticket for APC as the Edo senatorial candidate in the South. He's 45, he's going for the election. We have Elvis who won another uh, primary. So there are you, we're putting our self-interest aside. We're putting our political party interest aside, saying, let's analyze what is going on. Who, first of all, who is the candidate that is going to make sure you to have a voice? We want to see youth ministers. We want to see youth as head of parastatus. These are the things we are looking for. Not just using us to vote for you. 61% of the eligible voters are going to vote, and they are all youth. At the end of the day, we are set aside. Even so, the youth, minister of youth is going to be an elderly man. We don't want the, that. What is the yardstick to determine this person who has a youth program? First of all, we want to see the friendliness of this candidate. Not what you are telling friendliness. us. Friendliness. Of this candidate. That's objective. No. Okay. What is your antecedents? In the past, what did you do with the youth? Some of the candidates of the governors, when you were governor, what did you do with the youth? Was there anybody uh, youth in your cabinet? That's number one. All this why you are you're no longer a candidate. Uh, uh, how many youth have you empowered? What have you been doing with the youth? Not just what you're telling us now, I'm going to give you this, because these are politicians. They're going to say everything they want to say. 50% is going but, to be youth. But you're politicians too. I, I don't consider myself the, uh, the politicians <laughs> that you are used to. I'm, I'm a different kind of politician. Mm. I, I, say, I say the truth and what I think is obtainable. So they're going to tell us this. We don't want to be carried away by, by this. We want to know when you were governor, what, what did you do? Or when you were vice president, whatever you know, position you had before. Mm. And now all this why, what have you been doing? How are you riding around you? That's the things we're going to look at. And most importantly, who is going to win this election? Mm. So, so, so okay. it's a discussion. We, we've not <laughs> gotten there yet, but we are getting there. You know, only recently okay. I had uh, cause to have a conversation um, around this. It was with the former governor of um, Akwaibom State, um, um, 
And he, we're talking about, uh, he has a new group, <clears throat> but there have been a number of former governors, so I have to be very specific <laughs> about uh, which of the governors now. <clears throat> anyways, anyways, uh, he now has a new group. It's called the Compatriots, I think. Obong. Victor Atta. Victor yeah. Atta. And he was telling me, I was, I was saying, oh, do you have young people on board? He, what he's looking for is unity. And he was saying, you know, I, sh I need to be a little more specific in terms of what young, what I mean by young people. And he talked about when he was governor. When he was governor in 1999, there were a lot of other governors. He, he was rather, uh, uh, well, I say on the older side, there were younger governors, Donald Duke of uh, Cross River State was one of them, uh, and a number of other governors who were young. There were others in his own uh, age range. And he said that, look, what he finds interesting or what he thinks that a focus should be on should be about ideas, not about age. Um, and I don't know whether that, that is also coming on board, because it says if you also look at how student union groups are conducting themselves these days, you have to ask questions as to whether or not you know, there's really anything different in terms of what the older people are doing and what young people are doing. So are you making this distinction, or is your association just based on uh, because we're young, because we're in a certain age grade, uh, that that should be sufficient for us to, you know, have the same sort of ideas. What if you have people who are in your group and who are still thinking like, you know, the, the older folks? What difference is that going to make to you? Of course, that's where the orientation comes in. And that's why we spend hours discussing this. Now, we do understand that it's going to be issues of ideas. And we don't want to be carried away with just ideas. And now, as young people, we are set aside. That has been what has been going on in this nation, where now they think uh, we don't have no ideas. We are saying we are young. We have ideas. Now, let's make it clear. If you look at uh, all our, even our president, President Mohamed Obari, Nigerians wanted him so bad because they felt when he was minister, when he was uh, head of state, he did so well. If we are agreeing that these guys did well when they were in office, let's look at why they did well. Is it, because young, they were, is it all young people who have ideas? Not all young people. Of course, we are not saying every young man out there you know, should get into office, but some of us came out, we contested. Some of us came out, we threw our heart in the race. Are you aware that some uh, young candidates sold their property? I had one telling me he sold two of his properties just to get in the race. Some loaned money. It's one of, one of the reasons you don't want to see many of them out there. Many people got hurt as young candidates. I believe it's the passion and the love they have for this do, nation. Do you think that people should sell? Uh, if I hear that somebody is selling property to join a race, I will be concerned. Of course. I mean, I would advise that. I would even advise you loaning money. But I'm just saying they had passion. They had love for our dear country. And that's why they went into the race. Now, I think it's something for us to Is that how you're reading it? I'm reading it a little differently. <laughs> yes, you may read it differently, but... I think uh, the deed is done. I wouldn't want to pull him down already. He's already they're already feeling the hurt. My job now is to, as far as Proverbs 27, 17, sharpen them, encourage them not to give up. That's, there are many of them who don't even want to join anything. They yeah, are but, out but, of politics. But we also need to make sure that people don't make the same mistakes. That's why you are we're highlighting this. Yes, and that's why we are coming together as youth to, you know. At the end of this, this is what we, we make somebody like me very happy. When we youth infiltrate the system, for example, uh, Clement Jimbo was one of the aspirants in 2019. Even though he couldn't get the ticket to, in his party to becoming a candidate, we spoke. He joined the APC. Now he's running for House of Rep in his uh, constituency. And he won the ticket. I'll be so glad to see him as he representing his constituency. We have younger people who, you know, they are trying to get on board. Our job is to encourage them. Do you, do a time you... come yeah. where we have to forget about it. For example, in 2008, the first person I ever voted for as a person was Obama. I didn't care what Obama was, what, whatever idea he had. What I was concerned about is, he's a black man. This is going to be the black, first black president. Forget whether you have anything to offer. I voted for him because he was black. A time come where we are saying, get, get us on board. We have something to bring aboard. But that's some people say that's voting on emotion. Uh, and yes, and you cannot you discountenance the, uh, the power of emotions in, in politics. Uh, it's, it's really very strong. And it is one of the things that fuels the passion that people feel. Uh, but, you know, from what we have seen, after emotion dies, then we now begin to look at capacity. <laughs> whether or not, stark you know, reality. Yeah, so the, when stark reality hits, we now begin to, you know, vet whether or not the person even knows what that office is about, whether or not the person has had the prerequisite uh, you know, uh, what they call the experience. Because there's a reason why when you apply for a job, 
uh, the employers look to see your CV. They want to see whether your, your resume fits the, the position which you're applying for. Uh, are you able to say, you know what, even though we're supporting young people, there needs to be a place where capacity is built, that we must see a track record of capacity being built over the years before we can say, this is the kind of young person that we can vouch for. Yes, I mean, that's left now for the candidate to decide. Yeah, for which candidates? I'm saying, okay, whoever becomes the president. The point we are trying to make now is we are not even represented on the table. The idea of we don't have ideas, I went to a strange land. Which of the tables? And I built, when I'm at table, I want to see uh, in the administration, not during the election. What we're doing now is beyond just the election. We want, to see, we want to be relevant after the election is over. Apparently, the only time the youth, youth, youth is doing the election. So what we are fighting for is when 2023 election is over, we want to see youth, you know, start getting into the space, start doing something. For example, including the women. When I heard at the Moore State, uh, the uh, APC uh, candidate, governorial candidate is a lady. I was excited. We, the, thing, the world is moving on. We have to follow the trend. Youth, we have capacity. You won't know what we can bring about if we don't get on board. We, some of us have done great in our, in our young life. Build ministries, plant churches all over the world. I've traveled to about 18 countries building churches. I have businesses over 100 for the something employee. I've built a multi-million dollar company in America at a very young age. If I can do that in the private sector, what is politics is the easiest with what I've seen. Plant, running the ministry, running the business. We have done that in our young age. But if you don't put us on board, if we don't come on board, you will know exactly what we can do. Now, this idea of always saying, what have you done before? What have you done before? Has it occurred to you that every pilot that flies, there was a day they flew the plane after they graduated. Mm -hmm. They don't come to announce to us, today is my first day flying, and uh, nobody will fly the plane. But they give them, the, the company, the airline give them the privilege, they go on board, and they land us. After a while, they start telling us, I've had 200,000 miles to my board. You started one day. So we are saying, get on support. And that's where leadership and tutorials come in. If the leaders don't prepare the future for us and prepare us for the future, there's going to be disaster. So when, get on support, tutor us, but don't just put us aside. That's what we're trying to say. When you keep saying, get us on board, I mean, you've spoken about what you've done in different countries. Nobody got you on board. You went and you took it. You made those things happen. Uh, you didn't wait for anything to drop on your laps. Yes. So why is this one different? No, okay, it's different because the political space here is quite different. Number one, for you to win some level of election, especially at the federal level, you and I know it takes a whole lot of resources. So if we can be elected at some level, you can appoint us. So we're pushing for election. That's why I sample those who are, we have a 45-year-old young guy in uh, Edo, uh, Dr. Valentine, he won the ticket for APC as the Edo senatorial candidate in the South. He's 45, he's going for the election. We have Elvis who won another uh, primary. So there are youth also, he's 43 years old. Clement is 40 years old. They are fighting for election. They are going to be elected. Why we are doing that, we're also saying, appoint us also. That's just, just what we're saying. We're not here as rebels to push our leaders. We're not saying we hate them. We are saying we have something to offer. You see, one thing Nigerians must start doing, Something I, I went to a store in New York. I saw a pizza store. They were giving out free pizza. Buy one, get one free. What were they celebrating? 100 years of that business in existence. Ordinary pizza in Italian man. 100 years. In Nigeria, we don't have companies who last 50 years. Same thing is happening in our political space. Where is Bata, the famous shoe in those days in the 80s? There are no companies that last 50 years in Nigeria because why? Our leaders don't know how to handle the batting. Some of them will even take it to their grave. We are saying, we are here, let us come on board so that as you guys are retiring, train us so that you will have a Nigeria to enjoy. First Bank will disagree with you. We've been here for 125 years. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one bank. But there are so many, so many companies that they don't... And the head Ordinary hair, hair salon will be there for 50 years in this country. <laughs> but Nigeria, they are not there. Let's they fall away. In. Let's bring in our colleagues in Lagos. Well, thank you, Chamberlain. Indeed, a lot of companies, the formal and informal ones, will disagree with you on that one. But um, help us understand this, because really, you said that um, politics is easy, right? Because if you've succeeded in what, in the private sector, you can do politics easily. But you also said in the same breath that you know, winning elections in Nigeria is very, very hard and all of that. So help us understand this, really. Um, you were schemed out, it would seem, young people, in spite of your large demography. Same for women, even worse for women. Women make up half of the population, but in governance, 
they're even fighting for 10 percent talk more of the affirmative action so help us understand what exactly I don't want to say easy now because you also said it's difficult. What makes it difficult for young people to be a part? I'm still going to get to what you're proposing, but I just want to have a sense of maybe what you people decided within yourself that what is that big hurdle to us being a part? Because you have the numbers really, and it's, it only makes sense. Democracy is about numbers. If you have the numbers, you should have the representation. Let me, let me clarify this more. When I, when I use the word, is easy. I'm comparing it to being a pastor. Being a pastor is the easiest job, in my opinion. Somebody else can disagree. Apart from being a mother raising kids, being a pastor is one of the most difficult jobs uh, on earth. So uh, pastoring people, the expectation is high. You, can, you have to be perfect. You can't make mistakes. So that's what I'm comparing it to. A pastor, I've been, started being a pastor at the age of 22. I'm 41 now, so when I compare it with politics, I see a big difference. So that's why I'm saying, you know, it's a little bit much more easier uh, in politics. Now, what we are asking for, again, is just to have the youth on board. Our discussion went very well. We agreed that uh, at the end of the day, we're going to have a candidate. Not now, it's maybe to January, we have to all agree. Nobody is infusing any candidates. We're all from different political parties. But we want, our interest is to make sure that the youth voice are heard. That's all what this is all about. I'm, I'm a, the deputy national youth coordinator of the APC. I have my candidates. We have uh, those from Labour Party. We have those from PDP, NUP, and even current uh, uh, presidential candidates are with us. But at the end of the day, we have one interest. We don't want youth to be used. We don't want to be dumped. We want question to have a question particularly. For part of me to come in. My question particularly. I mean, look at the young people in that visual. Lots of them, mostly young people. My question is, what exactly is the hurdle? I imagine that you must have done some sort of preliminary findings. Is it lack of money? Because these things are said time and again, but I, I really want us to take a hold of it. Is it lack of funds? Is it lack of structure? Is it lack of ideas? Is it the fact that even the young people are not taking it, as Chamberlain said, because nobody will give it to you? What exactly is that big hurdle that is stopping young people from transitioning from that huge number they have to really the proper representation on that table which you alluded to earlier? The, 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 we, we don't lack ideas as young people. Our issue is money. I remember in 2019, we had several meetings. This, this may be embarrassing to say. We, are, we couldn't even afford the hotel we were using for the meeting. It was so embarrassing that uh, we had to quickly just raise money and pay for it. So we've always uh, encountered uh, hindrances, hurdles, because when it gets to where ideas are about to be hashed, no, no, no resources to fund them. For example, we have a mega youth summit coming up where we are going to invite some of the candidates, we are going to question. It's going to cost us millions of naira to do this. When it gets to that place and you're asking all the aspirant and candidates to come and bring money, it becomes an issue. Because one of the things we said we're not going to do is to meet any candidate and search for money. Nobody can buy, buy us or bribe us or try to infiltrate for us to gravitate towards them. We're not going to do that. I made it very clear on the first day. But when it comes to now where we need a lot of resources to do this, it becomes an issue. That's why some of us have decided at the, at, at the start to fund this alone so that we don't face that, that hurdle. The problem has been money. It costs billions of naira. Even the go, uh, to run for government in any state, it costs billions of naira. So these are some of the challenges. And sometimes the youth don't even make it easy on us. Some of these youth see, see all on the street. They expect exactly the same thing from us. Oh, this politician is going to do this. But you know we don't have these resources. And we're here representing you. So they make it even difficult for us. They come to your event. There's no day they don't see you. Give me this, give me that. The moment you say you don't have, it becomes an issue. So yes. uh, money has always Mr. been Felix. The, the problem. But Mr. we have to Felix. keep striving. Mr. We have Felix. to keep pushing. Yes. Yeah. So if money is the problem and you do so much work, you're putting a lot to get the money, uh, why is it then that... Nigerian youths, when they get ahead and, you know, they make some sort of headway, they, uh, you know, begin to step down for the bigger presidential aspirants. And I'd like to, you know, use you as a case in point. Uh, you were 37 when you contested on another platform uh, earlier in 2019, and you made, um, you know, some showing, even though not impressive. But back then, in um, 2022, ahead of the primaries, you stepped down for another presidential aspirant. 
aspirant. I, I'd like you to talk about that experience. What is it that caused you to step down? Because it's been expressed on this program by other, uh, you know, young people who are clamoring for, for participation of more of, you know, the people like them in politics. So share with us your experience. Why did you have to step down if you did so much to get there? I, I imagine, you know, what you spent on your nomination form. Yeah, uh, for us, like I, I always say, when it comes to politics, uh, outside of the camera, outside of the rallies, when I get back with my team, we always try to be very realistic and tell ourselves the truth. Uh, during the APC, when the new B was signed, it kind of changed the dynamics of the whole thing. Usually, the primary election are done between October and November. At this time, we had just very short time to do what we had, it, what we had to do, less than 30 days. And the list of the delegates were fluctuating. We didn't even know who was who. Before it came out, the, the access to the delegates to even go and reach them, or like other candidates who had enough resources traveling to, to see these delegates, we couldn't do such. And what we did was to get the phone numbers of the delegates. We reached out to them via messages, making calls. Uh, the feedback we were getting, some of the delegates were saying, oh, we don't know you that much. We, didn't, we don't know you that much. When we saw that, it may be difficult for us to, to hit this. It may be difficult for us to get this. In order for our effort not to be wasted, we said, okay, let's align with somebody we know that will always represent our interests. That's why we went that way. We didn't just want to throw all our effort down. When we know exactly the time was not there, the resources were not there. And of course, we didn't just want to pull out. It will, you know, uh, all our efforts will be wasted. That's why we said, okay, we may not get the entire car. Let's, let's do something. Let's, you know, align with somebody so, so going, we know that we represent going our interests. Forward That's now, why we did that. Going forward now, this common ground for conversation with other presidential, uh, with, with past presidential aspirants, should you pick a, a presidential candidate that is not from your party, wouldn't that be conflicting with your job as, you know, one of the uh, campaign managers for the All Progressives Congress? No, it would not be, it would not be conflicting because I represent my candidates. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the, the, the person from the Labour Party is going to represent his candidate. I'm sure those from PDP are going to represent their candidate. It's left to us now to come on board and say, this is what I know about my candidate. This is what I know my candidate can do. And as a group, as a team, we'll be able to analyze it. I have a personal uh, 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 relationship with my candidate. I know what we have discussed. I know the promises. I know what he can do. It's left for me now to do a good job by presenting my candidate. It's left for everybody now on the table to do a good job and present their candidate. At the end of the day, we're going to vote. Nothing has been imposed. The few decisions we have made so far, it has all been voting. And like I said, to my greatest surprise, sometimes it's nine people to one. It has, we've been speaking one voice. And I know it's going to be a very successful one at the end of the day. And time is of the essence, Mr. Felix, you know, beyond the conversation, what is the template that you're presenting, you know, for the presidential candidate that you eventually pick, you know, for appointive positions? Because you say that you want to stay around. So what is the template that you'll be presenting to the presidential candidate that you will pick? And um, how are you committing them to implement it when they become, uh, you know, when they e emerge victorious in 2023? As a matter of fact, yes, uh, yesterday we had that discussion. We have not finalized yet. Suggestions are coming up. Some of uh, the aspirants want the candidate to sign. And to, to me, politicians can sign anything. They can say anything. We want beyond just signing. We want uh, commitment beyond that. And we might get a few other people involved who are going to ensure that these politicians, they do exactly what they say. So we have not finalized on that yet. Several meetings, we have another meeting on Zoom this week. It's a whole lot of discussion for us to get to exactly where we are. But the good thing is we have started, and we hope at the end of the day, uh, something good comes out of this, because it will be a wasteful exercise and resources if all this just goes on, so, you know, unnoticed. So what you've said that you don't want essay to essay to essay. Uh, what are the roles you're eyeing specifically now? Uh, I mean, we know the presidential, the vice presidential are taken, but what are the roles, aside Minister for Youth and Sports, the usual one. What are the specific roles you're eyeing in government? If you ask me, we're eyeing every post, including the, the seat of the president. That's why we came out. No, that, that's taken day, already, Mr. Felix. That's, to, that's to already decide. taken, except you're planning something else. Now, realistically, <laughs> that is. That's what I'm saying. I believe we can function in, in every capacity. I believe we have people who are good in so many areas. I jokingly even said, 
I would love to see Shuri as the, as the chairman of the EFCC. And I know he may never accept that, but uh, I would love to see somebody like Kisley Mogalu in the economic team. We have people who are specialized in different uh, uh, areas. So the candidate now, that's what, what we are saying. If you are youth friendly, you know who is who, you understand where people can function. And if you really want to get the youth on board, we don't need to demand and tell you, you must make me Minister of Petroleum. You know exactly what to do. And that's what we are going to be looking at. What can this uh, uh, candidate do? How, you know, uh, what is their way of thinking? Can you see this? If I can picture that somebody like Kisley Mongalo, who was the deputy governor in C uh, CBN, is good in the economics, we can get you on board to join. And I, I think this candidate should have the eye as leaders to also see that. Youth, we have a lot to bring on board and be able to, to join in the administration. Won't your principal be disappointed if the team don't support him as the candidate? If, if, there's nobody that will not be disappointed. I went to the primaries. I, was, I wasn't happy when it came out. But in every election, there must be a winner. But like, again, like I said, we are going to bring... I'm not there to just throw my principal. I'm there to represent my party. The PDP guy is there to represent his party. The Labour Party is there. So it's up to us now to come and tell us, why do you want it to be your candidate? I'm come prepared and letting them know, this is what my candidate can do. This is what he's going to do. This is what I think he has done. This, everybody has to present it. At the end of the day, we are going to vote. Somebody's so, going to be disappointed. Who? I don't know. What if you present another candidate other than your, or the team chooses another candidate other than your party's flag bearer? What if they consider you participating in that as anti-party activity? No, they, they understand that this is, a, this is totally different from my position. I'm fully for the APC. I'm the campaigning for the, the youth. But the idea here is we need somebody. Again, if, I'm truly, uh, if I truly believe in my principle, I should be able to represent it. That's what we're doing. That's why nobody has been told not to speak about your principle. Mm. A time is coming where all of us will have to come. You want it to, I want it to be Bola Ametinibu. I'm going to have to explain to the, to the team, this is why I want it to be him. It's left to them to buy it. The other person have to explain. You have to be able to say your candidate. Unfortunately, if you can't say your candidate, it means your candidate can't do anything. Because at this level, if your candidate is really youth friendly, you should have known by now, and you should be able to present it on board. I believe my is youth friendly. I can. I have all the arsenal. I have things ready to present. Now it's left for us now as a group to vote and decide which way we are going. So how does this work? Is it just with the former presidential? Uh, aspirant or candidates, or is it themselves and what their structure, as it were, if there's any such thing in this particular case? So, uh, what are they bringing to the table? Why should the parties or the candidates listen to them? Oh, yes, we all have structure. It may not be as big as you think. During the election, many of us gather thousands of votes. As little as you think that may be, it adds to it. We are not saying we are the one person who is going to make you lose an election, but you do know every vote counts. Recently, there was an election held in, uh, in America, and the candidate won by just one vote. So every vote count, we are bringing our own on board. Mm -hmm. Every aspirant, every candidate, no matter how small you think they are, they do have people who, rep who they represent, and they do have followers. So we are saying we are bringing what we have on board, and we hope that these uh, candidates will we, we follow suit. And it's getting bigger. This is not, it's starting now with just former presidential aspirant. Everybody was invited, nobody was cut out. As far as you were young, you know, under 60, we sent an invitation. Of course, many are not going to show up. So why is it just presidential aspirants? Why not other positions? There are, yes, we, for now, because the election we have right now is a presidential election, we're focusing on just that. But like I said, it's going to get bigger where we're going to have almost everybody on board. The time is too short for us to do that now. Hence, we voted on that also. I wanted it to be just beyond that. But when I got there, Every, almost everybody wanted the other way. But even though I'm the convener, I have to understand that this is a group. This is only about what I feel or what I want. So they voted that for now, mm -hmm. let's limit it because we don't have time. We have just two months to do a lot. While we are campaigning, we are you know, moving from state to state for our parties. This is just by the side. So there's not enough time to do all. Hopefully after the election, we're going to be able to come and see it all over the country and make our voice louder and bigger. I'm just a little curious. Why should they trust you? Uh, because uh, even though you have said it's a non-partisan arrangement for now, you obviously belong to a political party. You are deputy youth coordinator for yes. the presidential campaign. I mean, what if this is just about, you know, some long-term strategy 
to not just for now, you know, for maybe much later, but also even for now. Why should the other uh, participants in this group of yours trust you? Like I said, they did. As a matter of fact, when we conveyed it, I didn't even start as a convener. I sat with three other candidates and we spoke about it, we planned it. On that very first day, they voted. I didn't ask to be voted for. They voted that I should be the chairman of the group. They do trust me because I brought some ideas that they thought, no, let's go this way. And there was no argument. I went there. So in terms of the trust, somebody have to be trusted. My interest is pure towards this. I have no personal interest. And my interest is not just my party, but I'm saying all of us have to bring our candidates. Somebody, you have to represent your candidate. If you cannot represent your candidates on the day of we are, we're going to be voting, it means you have a lot of work to also do. Because if we are telling your candidate to, to consider you, you need to be able to come on board and tell us what your candidate is going to do. And you have enough time. If you need to meet with your candidate now, let him know, hey, I'm going to be voting for you. I'm going to be doing this. I need to know more. You have the time now to do this. I have already done that. Even before accepting the, youth, the position of the youth, I had to make sure this person is going to represent the youth, not just APC youth, when he become the president. I have to make sure this person is somebody we can talk to. Joining people is not, uh, or supporting a candidate, it's not a big deal for me. Like I said, I don't have to be here. If I quit politics today, and this, I'm not going to lose, but we are here to serve, like our, our national items say. We are here as youth, we have strength, we have love, we have faith to serve our father's land. That's what this job is all about. So. All of them should be able to present their candidates where I'm going to present my candidate. I'm going to explain from day one why my candidate is the best for this job. And at the end of the day, we also have to look who stand the chance of winning. We have two other younger candidates. I'm sure they're going to want us to support them as younger candidates. If I was a candidate, I'm sure I would have want them to support me. Then, like I said, we have to be realistic. We have to tell ourselves the truth. Hey, my brother, we love you. We want to we cheer you up in this game. But you and I know you're not winning this election. Yeah, well, why, do you, why are you not looking also at younger candidates who have the potential to win, especially in other uh, maybe positions at the subnational level, to see how you can also push them forward? We're, we're doing that. That's why I mentioned some names. I even wrote them out. We're doing that. Even financially, we're supporting. We're doing that. So this is not just at the presidential level. Some of these are not even in my state. Elvis is, my, is in my local government. I went to support him in his campaign, sponsor it. Uh, uh, Valentine is, is running as a senator. I told him, when else you have a rally, come. I will sponsor myself and come. So we are doing that. Clement is one person I am ruling for. We are supporting even financially. So say, we want you to win. So this is not just at the national level. The little we can, remember, we, we, we're just building this up. The little we can is to make sure we support all our candidates. They don't have to all be in our party. As far as you are young, you have passion, and we believe you can do something, we support you. And one thing we're also making sure, let me just throw this in, is it is common for youth to get into office, whether elected or appointed, and they forget why they are there. We will be the first person to rebel against you. As a youth, whether you are appointed or you are elected, and you get there and you start misbehaving, stealing uh, government funds, not doing the reason, we will come back on this same station and rebel against you and want you out because it's going to defeat the purpose why we are doing this. It's going to make us look bad. And for those who are coming behind us, very soon some of us are going to be in our 50s and 60s. And the youth can no longer have a voice. So every youth out there, you get into office, you know the reason why you are there. Represent the youth. Don't make us look bad. The moment we hear that you are, you are doing otherwise, we're going to rebel against you and, let's, and, and kick you out. Let's wind down with this one. Are you planning to start you know, with an example, for instance, speaking up against anyone who is associated or perpetuates any form of electoral violence against any group whatsoever, insisting that the authorities must go after those people, no matter whose ox is God, for instance? The ele no, no, no election, uh, the life of any Nigerian does not worth it. Hearing that the, the women leader of the uh, Labour Party in Kaduna got killed, that breaks my heart. We shouldn't die because of an election. That's why I said 2019 was such a good one because a lot of youth were represented. When you give youth something to do, they, they don't go into violence. So it doesn't matter which party who, who, who is saying that. I'm not going to die for an election. The victory that is coming, the success, the greatness we're seeing in Nigeria, I believe each and every one of us want to be here to see it. So we don't, we don't encourage violence and nobody should. And we will definitely kick against any form of violence because at the end of the day, the youth suffers more. They're the ones who are sent as talks and they get killed. We don't want that. All right, Mr. Nicholas Felix is a former presidential aspirant for the APC. He's also Deputy National Youth Coordinator for the uh, Tinubu Shetima Campaign Organization. Thank you for coming on and all the best. Thank you very much.